This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and by popular demand, this is our smackdown between the Microsoft Surface Pro 4 right here and the latest generation Dell XPS 13 with the Infinity QHD display. Both of these, well, you know, they're not cheap. Certainly, you have to have some bucks to buy them, but they're actually fairly similarly priced once you throw in the $130 keyboard for the Surface Pro 4, which I think most of us want and need. So how do you decide between these two? We're going to find out now. So here you have two absolutely lust-worthy ultra portables. Microsoft Surface Pro 4, the uh, perhaps almost perfection of something that Microsoft's been working on for four generations. 12.3 inch high resolution display supports both touch and the included digital active pen. So first off, if you want a pen, if you're going to be doing art or note taking, you want something like the Surface Pro 4. Dell XPS doesn't support the pen and you don't usually see that on something that is a traditional laptop form factor because trying to write over like that is pretty darn awkward. You'll see it in convertibles and in tablets like the Surface as well. 13.3 inch display and we're going to talk about the QHD resolution model because that's most comparable to this in terms of resolution and specification. 12.3 inch display. If your eyes aren't so good and you find small screens challenging, well there's that. Um, as we continue talking about displays, I think you can see the difference here. This is a sharp IXO panel which has very high contrast and very cool colors. You can see how much cooler the flower looks. This is actually closer to an accurate representation right here. Surface Pro 4 is also one of the brightest products on the market, so it's even brighter than the Dell XPS 13 with the QHD Plus IXO display. Uh, that said, the Dell XPS 13 versus most other laptops looks pretty darn bright, so we're not talking, you know, chump change here. This is, this is a good product. However, if you're a somebody who does photo editing for a hobby or very seriously or professionally video editing, anything with color accuracy is important. Probably Surface Pro 4 is the one I would go with because it is it comes calibrated from the factory pretty accurately. And the Sharp Ixo display is, again, a very nice high contrast, bright white, bluish white sort of display, but it's pretty hard to get it to calibrate to be actually accurate. So, like I said, do you want a laptop or do you want a tablet? Surface Pro 4 is a tablet that happens to have a $130 optional keyboard that I think most people feel is pretty much mandatory. So add that on to the price tag available in a variety of colors. You probably know that by now. Very slim, very light. The tablet by itself weighs about one and three quarter pounds, but it's almost two and a half pounds once you put on the keyboard. Still, I mean, that's very light. This is very easy to throw in a bag. Uh, we have a kickstand here, so you can use it at a variety of angles. I find it reasonably lappable, you know. I do type with this on my lap, and you can use this on an airplane tray. It's up to you as to how ergonomic you find it. I think this keyboard is actually very good, and it's gotten a lot quieter. It used to be very kind of hollow sounding when you type, so you could derange the person sitting next to you. And not so much anymore. It's backlit also. It has a good trackpad on it. So as a laptop, it actually does work, but it still obviously isn't a laptop. You don't have that firm wedge going on over here. This is just a flappy appendage. The Dell is a traditional laptop. It does not 360 rotate. It does not have a separate display. This is as far back as the display goes, which I think will suit most people. So for those of you who really just want a laptop, you always just use it in laptop position. You can care less about the tablet features. Well, the XPS 13 could certainly make a lot of sense for you. Uh, the Dell has a very traditional keyboard as well. So for those of you who feel like the, the latest version of the type cover still feels odd to you when you type, well, the Dell's going to be nice, traditional, easy to use. Dell's also, I would say... <laughs> the sturdier product to carry around. It's not that the vapor magnesium casing on our Surface Book isn't rigid and isn't put together beautifully. It is, but you still have a glass panel facing out. Sure, this guy is protecting it for as much as that's worth, but I know occasionally people still manage to shatter their Surface Pro displays. It's, it's a little bit vulnerable. The Dell is just a metal clamshell, metal bottom, metal on the top. So if you're the klutzy type, if you just want to throw it in your bag carefree with a whole bunch of textbooks and goodness knows what else, the Dell is certainly up to that. Price-wise, either way, you got to have some bucks to spend to get either of these. This is the, what I would call, sweet spot configuration for the Surface Pro 4. It's $12.99. That gets you a Core i5. Both of these are Intel Skylake Core machines. 8 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig PCIe SSD. 
now a comparably equipped Dell, which with a QHD plus display, since this is quite high resolution as well, that's going to cost you about fourteen forty nine. So it's even more expensive. Who would think that something's more expensive than a Microsoft Surface product, right? Ah, but you got to throw in that hundred thirty dollars for the keyboard to make them comparable. So that becomes instead of twelve ninety nine, call it thirteen hundred. You're looking at fourteen thirty versus fourteen fifty. So they're pretty darn close in price. Both of these have base models that are much more affordable. For eight ninety nine you can get the surface with a core M three CPU. That's a fanless design, four gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. The Dell has a 799 model. That's a Core i3. Now, Core M sits somewhere between Core i3 and Core i5, so the Surface would be a little bit faster. But anyway, 799 gets you a Core i3, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. Both of these are now available. This is new for Dell with Core i7 with Intel Iris graphics. So for those of you who want a little extra integrated graphics punch, you can get it with either one. In terms of performance, in terms of benchmarks, these are both very similar. If you look at like configurations between them. So you're not going to get a lot more performance out of one than the other. Dell did a great job with delivering a clean operating system and pretty good drivers here. So nothing is blogging, bogging it down. And Microsoft, of course, you're getting a signature edition by default with no junkware on it at all. In terms of drivers, that's been, you know, poor Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book. They caught a lot of flack in part because they were the first Skylake systems that came out. So everybody found out that the Skylake plus Windows 10 eh, Intel drivers, there were issues. It wasn't the Surface's fault per se. The, the Dell XPS had the same thing with Intel HD display driver crashes and all that sort of thing. At this point, honestly, we've been through a bunch of software updates and BIOS updates for both of these, and I haven't seen the Intel HD graphics driver crashing anymore or some of the weirdness in Microsoft Edge web browser that we had. Some, they're pretty comparable there. I know this is, this is a pretty solid machine, the Surface. It's not a weirdo machine anymore, <laughs> if it ever was, that is. And the Dell also, very solid. Ports, you're going to have more ports on the Dell because it's a traditional laptop, but uh, not so many as in the old days because Dell now includes a USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port. So you can connect a bunch of little docking peripherals and stuff like that to it to get DisplayPort out, HDMI, Ethernet, all that sort of thing. So instead of having it on the machine, you got to spend some extra to get those docks to do that. But we do have that USB-C port right here and USB 3.0 standard headphone jack and another USB 3.0 port and a full-size SD card slot. And to give you an idea, this is Dell's little mini USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 dock. So this gets you another USB 3.0 port, this gets you Ethernet, this gets you HDMI and VGA and it's got a little connector that pops out. So something like that can give you a bunch more ports. And then there are docks. Now this is about the same size as the Microsoft dock for the Surface Pro 4, which you could argue that that does about the same thing that all these USB peripherals are going to do, USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3, except for external graphics amplifiers. That would be the only difference. Anyway, here's a new other world computing dock that's coming out in March. And this guy gets you SD card slot. USB 3, more, lots more USB 3s, Ethernet, HDMI, and so on. So there are options here if you go with the Dell for expanding the connectivity. With the Surface Pro 4, you're looking at the usual, I have a USB 3 port, I have a display port, which can drive 4K displays up to 60 hertz refresh rate, and we have a micro SD card slot under the flap in the back here. So not much. That's where Microsoft's $199 display dock comes in. It gives you a bunch of USB 3.0 ports, gives you display port, gives you HDMI, gives you Ethernet, gives you all that stuff too. For those of you who care about cameras and with devices this large, unless you're working in vertical market, I'm not sure how much you do, but tablet -y devices tend to get higher resolution and better cameras, not to mention front and back. So Surface Pro 4 actually has a pretty good 8 megapixel rear camera and a 5 megapixel front camera that's also very good. I think we all appreciate a higher resolution front camera because we look less like a blocky pale mess when I'm doing video chat. Dell is your traditional Ultrabook. It has a 720p woohoo webcam built-in mics on both of these and this is really a chin cam because it's down here so it will catch you from an under the chin and under the nostrils angle. That's because the bezel is so small there's no room to put it up top right there. Battery life. Well, you know, Dell touts 
how awesome their battery life is on the XPS 13 Infinity. And if you get the full HD non-touch version, which by the way, that 799 base model is, you're looking at high res a lower resolution and not even having touch versus the Core M3 version of this for 899. But anyway, if you get that model, it actually has a very lovely display on it and 1080p is a perfectly respectable resolution for a 13 inch machine if you don't care to have touch. That one is the one that has superb battery life and that one there pushes like 10 hours or so. But in our QHD plus 3200 by 1800 configuration here, not so much in terms of wonderful battery life. It's more like it depends on how you drive it, you know, what you're running in terms of programs. If you're just doing productivity stuff, playing videos from the web, streaming, that sort of thing, seven hours or so. And, you know, that's at about 40% brightness. And Surface Pro 4 is about a six and a half hour machine, so a little bit shorter on Surface Pro 4. Neither of these is one of those award-winning Energizer bunnies once you're talking about the high resolution display option on the Dell. But again, if you decide I don't even need touch and I just want the, one of those cool machines and I don't know which one it is, but I'm happy with the standard laptop and 1080p is awesome -aneous, you can do that with the Dell and get yourself some good battery life too. So there you have it. They're both different and they're alike at the same time. So hopefully now you have a better idea of which of these you should buy. And I totally understand if you just want to get both. So there you have it, the Dell XPS 13 Infinity and the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Two machines I think anybody would love to own. Honestly, I would be happy with either of these. So as you see, what it comes down to in the end is, first and foremost, do you want a laptop, a traditional laptop design? Then it's the Dell XPS 13 right there with that usual 13.3 inch size display. If you want something that can morph into a tablet, and in fact is designed to be more of a tablet than a laptop, though it does work pretty well as a laptop, then it is Surface Pro 4. It does have a smaller screen depending on how your eyes are. That can make a difference too. If you need the pen, it's Surface Pro 4. If you're doing photo editing where real color accuracy is important, I would certainly go with the Surface Pro 4 or the Surface Book. They both have pretty much the same kind of display technology inside. So there you have but hopefully it's easier to decide between the two of these now, though I can understand if, like me, you would just love to own them both. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these products, read our written reviews, and hit that like button.